this video has been a long time coming. I'm sure for a lot of people it's been even longer a time, but for me, I heard the announcement for Midnight Sun and I was like, I am going to use this opportunity to read Twilight. If you are not familiar with my channel, I just finished a series where I go through the four original Twilight books and watch the five original Twilight movies and I sort of give my initial impressions of them because I missed that entire cultural phenomenon when it was new. I chose to do that because Midnight Sun got announced and I wanted to follow the Midnight Sun hype train with everybody else and I have finally finished Midnight Sun. It took me a while, but we got there eventually. So yeah, if you've never seen my channel before, hi, my name is Michael Nip. Welcome, I'm glad you made it. If it sounds interesting, uh, I'm gonna link the playlist that has all of my other Twilight videos up above. Those were a blast to make. I think that people were able to enjoy them. I'm very proud of those videos. But if you haven't seen those videos, my take with the Twilight series has been one of just trying to appreciate Twilight for what it is while recognizing maybe the problematic elements, not dwelling on them for the purpose of, you know, enjoying the books for what they were meant to be for the target audience. So if you haven't already got that take, I want to reiterate that Midnight Sun does nothing to fix any of the <laughs> problematic elements that exist in this story, in this romance, in this world. It's not going to do anything to fix that, especially as adults. We know those are not healthy things. They've been criticized for literally since the books came out, though I think that it's, it's very common for people People that read them as a young person to not realize that everyone has known how bad they were for a really long time. The criticism has always existed. This book will do nothing about that. If you are unable or choose not to uh, overlook or embrace the weird world that we are in and the messed up ways that it portrays certain things, this will not change your mind. Midnight Sun almost makes it worse in, in multiple ways. I feel like if you were not a fan of the original books from Bella's perspective, you will not be a fan of Midnight Sun, the same exact story from Edward's perspective. I don't think that is reaching out on a limb too much, but I do feel like it's worth saying because there might be people out there saying, I hated the original books, maybe I like this one. I doubt it, unless you just reframe your entire way of thinking. But that brings up one of the most interesting things that I like to think about when it comes to Midnight Sun, which is, who in the world is this book written for? So we know that Midnight Sun was a book that Stephanie Meyer wrote a long time ago. Uh, parts of it leaked. She didn't finish it, I don't think, but like she had the idea for this book a long time ago, right after the series was finished, but it leaked. It was a whole drama thing and she pulled back because she was, you know, tired of, of toxic fans and haters and, you know, all the bullcrap surrounding Twilight at all points. But she's dropped it now and it's been like 17 or some years, 17. That's a funny number. It's been a long time since those original books came out. And who is this book written for? Is this book written for new people trying to get into Twilight? Is this book written for the biggest Twilight fans trying to get a new perspective? Is this book written for young people to try to get them into the series? Or is this book written for people that enjoyed the series as young people who are now reading it as an old person who are still enjoying it? I'm not 100% sure, but I lean toward this book being written for people that were huge fans of the original series. They may recognize some of the weird and creepy elements of the first one, but they, you know, they've still embrace the fantasy fulfillment romance that it is. I feel like it's written for people that are older now, and I really think that it's written for actual Twilight fans. Uh, while this could be used as a tool, I mean, I guess in a backwards way, it was kind of used as a tool for me to get into the series. While this could be the first Twilight book that you read, I don't think necessarily that's what the intent is. Though I would be curious if there are people out there, if you watched a video or there's a booktuber or something where somebody read Midnight Sun and then jumped right into New Moon, I would be curious to see how that experience is for the first time. Because as someone that just finished reading this entire series, it feels like a lot of backtracking. It makes sense. It's a retelling from a different POV. Which is to say, also, if you are looking forward to reading Midnight Sun, I don't really recommend just reading the original Twilight before this. I think that would be too repetitive. Thankfully, I read it a couple months ago now, so it's not as fresh for me, but I feel like if you read Twilight and then immediately jumped into this book, it would not be a positive experience. I think this is meant to be for people who have familiarity with the original story, 
but some distance from the original story. Now, before I actually dive in and I start talking about this more in depth, I want to state that I don't know if this is considered a spoiler-free or a spoiler review because it is a retelling of a story that has existed for a long time. It's the retelling of a story that I've talked about on my channel a lot. And so I am going to be talking about the Twilight series as, as you know, freely as I normally would in these types of videos. I'm going to assume that you've read the first four books. I, I may not even delve into all of them, but I'm just going to safely assume you've read Twilight before. I don't know what counts as a spoiler for this book because we are exploring the same story. But if you're super sensitive about that, I'm sorry. I'm just going to kind of give the what is different about this book. What do I think works about it? Maybe what doesn't work. So Midnight Sun. We are seeing the original Twilight, as everyone knows, from Edward Cullen's perspective. But what does that mean on the page to page telling? First of all, I talked about in my Twilight series how I thought it was brilliant, how Stephanie Meyer was able to take like emo teen girl Bella and portray that on the page in a way that I thought was just pristine. And then she was also able to switch to Jacob's POV in Breaking Dawn. And that was also extremely well done. She just did an angry, like an angry 15 year old teen perfectly. This is going to come from the perspective of a 17 year old, extremely broody, intellectual, but like way overthinking kid who comes from a different, just a different century really. And I think that she nails the Edward perspective that I was kind of hoping for. And the most brilliant aspect of this is that we know that Edward has mind reading powers. His mind reading powers actually allow us to cheat and see POVs from multiple other characters as he is able to read everyone in the story's mind except Bella which thankfully, we already know Bella's point of view. So Edward really allows us to explore multiple facets of this series, and it allows Stephanie Meyer to do a little bit of retconning without it feeling like cheating, which is to say she's able to flesh out so many characters, fill out parts of the world in ways that make total sense, were not in the original at all, and don't feel hacky or like they were something that was just completely added later. Like, it feels natural, but it also feels weirdly like, like she somehow found a cheat code that doesn't feel like a cheat code. For instance, all of the character development that we know about the Cullens from the entire series, we can now see displayed in this one. We know the personalities of Emmett and Jasper and Alice and Rosalie. We don't really know those things that much in the first book. Bella doesn't get to see a lot of that in the first book but we see it more throughout the series. Well, this book allows us to get those personalities that we know and to see the elements. We get to become more familiar with these people. It feels totally applicable, but it also feels like somehow she cheated and got to add this lore into the first. It's, it's weird how she's able to do that. It's one of the most like successful prequel attempts, if you want to call it a prequel, attempt that I've ever seen because it doesn't feel cheating and it also still feels interesting. We're able to delve into the minds of all of these characters and because Alice is able to see the future and Edward's able to read her mind, we're able to see the future. We're able to see everyone's feelings from Jasper's perspective. It's, it's so cool the way that we are able to get so much world building just from Edward's POV. And it is wonderful to see all of these characters. It is wonderful to see the actual genuine compassion and purity that is Carlisle. It is wonderful to see the awkward love from freaking Charlie, who I've said before is the best character in all of Twilight, Charlie. Freaking wonderful, beautiful, sweet, sweet man. Don't at me. And you know I have to mention that we get to see a little bit of Jacob Black's head. And like I said, he's just a sweet, beautiful boy at the beginning of this series. It, I know it now because it's proof, it's canon, we literally see inside his mind in the first book. Thank you, Stephanie Meyer. We get to see the brotherly friendship between Emmett and Edward. We get to see the, the tension in the sibling relationship between Rosalie and Edward and why 
that exists and how that exists. It's it's a lot of fun. Like everything about it is a lot of fun with the Cullen family. The stereotypes that exist in Bella's uh, regular friends at school, we get to see them blown out to the complete max. We get to see Mike and Jessica just fully fleshed out as you kind of got the impression that they were. Well, we get to see their minds now. Jessica's a jerk. Mike's kind of a jerk, but mostly awkward. We get to see all of that and it's it's super cool. The way that Meyer was able to use Edward to explore way more than like it seems like on initial, the retelling from a different POV. It's just, it's super cool the way that works out with the lore she has in the world. She uses it to great effect. She does add some like strange stuff like with Edward has this inability to completely read Charlie's thoughts, which that's not in the original and it kind of seems like he's able to read his thoughts normally in the original. That's a weird choice. But the most interesting choice I think of all is that we have looked at Twilight. I've talked about this before. Twilight has been criticized because we are seeing the world through Bella's point of view. I've pointed out how it's an unreliable narrative style of storytelling. And we are seeing the world through Bella's eyes. We know that she's misconceiving things, but we, we kind of don't know the extent of that because that's the only POV we get until later on. But in this book, seeing the world from Edward's POV, which we could still call some sort of unreliable narrator, it's going to be skewed towards him. What it allows Meyer to do is that we are able to finally understand why Edward would like Bella, why he would fall in love with Bella. Because when we are seeing the world outside of her perspective, and we're seeing the things that she might do that she wouldn't necessarily think about, the things intrinsic to her character, and when we're not seeing the moments that are big moments for her, but might be interesting to Edward, a potential suitor, we're able to see that Bella is a fully fleshed out character in a way that, once again, it feels like a cheat code, where Stephanie was able to go and sort of rewrite Bella's character from the way that we understand it. I mean, maybe this was the uh, intention the whole time, but it didn't come across. We're able to see Bella as a super interesting character. Frankly, she seems like a girl that you could have a crush on. And that's amazing the way that she's done that by letting you see her through someone else's eyes. Does it feel like she's adding to the story in a bad way? No, but it does feel like somehow she's cracked the code on how to fully flesh out this character that everyone said was a Blake Shell before into someone super interesting just from seeing it from someone else's perspective. It's brilliant. It's freaking wonderful. But what about Edward himself? Well, Edward is, he's broody, he's introspective, he starts off haughty, and then he, uh, in more ways than one, he is a haughty, but he's also haughty, like, puffed up. We are able to see the depths of the, like, bloodthirst madness that exists. I made a joke in my, like, original video, I think it was, about Twilight, that it would be hard when you're falling in love with food. That is just blown to the max in this story. Edward is constantly struggling with wanting to kill Bella, and we get to dive into that. Does that add to some of the problematic elements where this romance is tied with violence? Uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> but if we're talking about it, like, it also adds to this fantasy fulfillment element, I think, where someone is in pain, it is such a struggle for them to love someone, but they choose to do it anyway. His love for Bella is so extremely unrealistically strong, but like that's kind of the whole point. We get a lot of the moments that I talked about from the first book where in the movie, it just feels like it's an insta-love thing. It happens, it doesn't make any sense. But in the books, both the original and this one, we spend so much time with Edward just talking to Bella, getting to know her, asking questions about her life. She is trying to find out about him. They spend a lot of time together. Is it still a little fast? Do they still go from zero to 100? Yes, but it feels like a relationship. There's cute element. Okay, listen, this is gonna sound ridiculous because the series is known for having the problems that it does. But there is an innocence to parts of their relationship that feel just so genuinely like your first love where you get a trinket from someone and that is a dear a special object like you every single thing about their the encounter you remember you want to know everything you can about this person and you want to spend every moment with this person like there is some kind of like weird pureness to a lot of the romance aspects of this book layered into all the weird creepiness that makes it just 
it makes it click. It really does flesh out why Edward would like Bella, which is one of the questions I think I had in the original. We know why Bella would like Edward. We understand there's a conflict there. Midnight Sun really does a great job, I think, about just... I just think it's amazing the way that Meyer has pulled this off. If you are a fan of this series and you want to have that fleshed out, you want to be reminded of these things, yes, I think you should read Midnight Sun. I think it does an excellent job. I think it adds a lot to the franchise, frankly. While at the same time, it does cover a lot of the same events. There is some repetition. If you've read Twilight, if you, especially if you're the type of person that read Twilight leading into the book, I think it's going to feel extra much for you because you cover so many of the same events, which I think is interesting because it kind of allows Meyer to say she's not retconning things because you are seeing the same exact events happen. It's, once again, a, a sweet tool. Nonetheless, it's on the longer side. This book is very long, and the original Twilight book is not that long. So, depending on how much you care about the intricate details of back world building and retconning to flesh out some of these characters, it may be a little long for you. I didn't find it to be a problem at any point, but also I just loved seeing how broody Edward was. I liked seeing every single sweet moment that he had with Bella to try to get to know her. I, I seriously fell in love with Bella in a way that I never have before seeing her through Edward's eyes. It helps to not only see her perspective, to see the reality of, you know, maybe he's skewed as well because he loves her, but like to see the reality of the situation from that angle. Maybe the only really actual super new stuff that we get is there are times when Edward decides to go hunting and we get to see some of that stuff. We get to see him spend a little bit of time with the people in Alaska. And then at the end, where the story where Bella is mostly passive and then she gets kidnapped, we actually get to see what Edward is doing during that period of time. And that's kind of interesting. We get a little bit of a Fast and Furious uh, with vampires tease, which is, you know, I'm down for it. But I feel like I'm rambling. What is the bottom line with Midnight Sun? I think that if you are the type of person that wants to be reminded of what it's like to be uh, someone who thinks way too much, someone who is madly in love with someone, but and even though it's obvious that their love is reciprocated, they feel that it's not because they're, they're like, there's no way someone could love me as much as I love them. There's no way my crush loves me that much. If you want to like relive those sorts of feelings that you had when you were a teenager, and especially if you're the type of person that already likes this sort of soap opera drama that is Twilight, I feel like there's no way you can't like this book. Maybe it will be too long for you. But at the same time, if you haven't experienced Twilight in a while and you want to get a refreshing of those events with a little bit of a different take, I think it's great. I think Midnight Sun is very, very good. Uh, the, the things that it adds are so interesting and it makes me want to see other books from other people's perspectives. I, I heard recently that Stephanie Meyer was extremely stressed out writing Edward because of just the sheer amount of things that he can see. It doesn't have to be that. I, once again, I think I've said this before, I need New Moon from Charlie's perspective. That would be the most buck wild book to ever hit the market. Stephanie Myers talked about potentially doing, I think maybe two other books in the Twilight universe from other POVs. I want to see more of it. Is it kind of unnecessary? Yes, but I feel like you won't be disappointed if you're a fan. I re-fell in love with Edward. I talk about Jacob a lot in my later sections of the Twilight videos because I think they did some weird things with this character, but I got to re-fall in love with Edward the way that I did at the end of book one. And it also did the same thing that book one did, which is give me a different perspective of one of the aspects of my hormonal teenage self and falling in love for the first time. Midnight Sun is beautiful. It's exactly what I kind of, it's more than what I hoped it would be. It's better than I hoped it would be. I was afraid. I thought I don't really like prequels. I, I didn't expect much out of this and I ended up super pleasantly surprised. This is the time. Is it time to get a Twilight reboot? Do we now get a new Twilight movie? Once again, if you did not like the original, if you are not down for what this series already is, it does nothing to change it. If you are already a fan of this series and you're down to just get back in that world and feel like you are getting new nostalgia for something you already love, I feel like it's perfect for that. I I personally, it's, it's a weird situation because I just read it, but I loved it. I did. I really did. Have you read Midnight Sun? 
Are you interested in reading it after what you've heard? What have you heard that has made you maybe not be interested in it? Once again, I feel like if you already have problems with the way that the, the, ro the problematic romances that happen, you're not going to like this one. But if you have already bought into it, you understand kind of what it is and you're okay with that. Once again, I, I strongly recommend it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Here's a random question for the comments down below. We talk about Bella cooking all the time, but we don't actually get to see what she cooks that much. What do you think Bella's favorite dish is to cook? If you like this video and you want to see other videos from me where I talk about, you know, what I'm reading, whether I like it or not, please consider subscribing to the channel. I would love to have you here. I love talking with people down in the comments. I also love people... I also love talking to people over on my Discord server, which is linked down below. That's free. Everybody can join. I would love to see you there and talk about Twilight or whatever the crap. We have a good old time there. And if you are able and if you would like to, I also have a Patreon, which is linked down below. There's some extra goodies if you would like to go that route. Thank you so much for watching this video. It has been a long time in the making. I have made it here. Now I need a Stephanie Meyer slash Twilight break. I'm not saying no. Like I said, I, I've loved this series. I've enjoyed it so much. I just need a little bit of break. This is a closure on a long project that I've done and I'm proud to have completed it. And I, I feel good about it. Thank you so much to everyone has followed me on this journey this entire time for all the goofiness that was like the original videos this one is obviously a little bit different because it's going to be a book review for a current book i'm still pitching my original videos if you haven't seen them they were a blast for me to make i think people enjoyed those but yeah i hope you are having a good week i hope you're having a good day thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you again later bye Always looking out tired of sleep. No one ever get enough. If I don't show up, I might get fired of sleep. No one ever get enough. Always looking out tired of sleep. No one ever get enough. If I don't show up, I might get fired.